So they're starting to take a little more form on now. I'm mixing up some really dark darks with the blues, a small amount of red, maybe just a touch of the yellow so it doesn't get too purple, but most of the blues and reds get these dark, almost blacks. Believe it or not, these have, there's no black on this palette yet. And that's good because that way if I get to where I want something really dark, really black later, I can add it and it will be more intense, more intensely black. Once you've used your, your pure black, you basically hit the limit. You can't get any blacker. Same with pure white. You're very slow to use pure white in a painting because you'll hit the limit and then you can't go any dark, any brighter either, any lighter, lighter. So save those for the very end is what I usually do. Now we're establishing things with those really darks. See how I'm mixing up some really dark, dark uh, color areas on my palette now. As I need to, I add a little bit of the uh, the liquid, which is seeming to put more on my palette. I'm just about out. Whenever you start getting low on a color of paint or on your medium or anything in your palette, put more on because you don't want to be making poor decisions about what to mix just because you're too lazy to put more paint on the palette. That's not a good plan. Here. I'm constantly looking back and forth to my reference photo, from back and forth from the painting to the photo, the painting to the photo. The more often you do that, the, more, the less you'll get off track and start doing something that's really not either where it should be or the color it should be. Should be constantly scanning back and forth. This music is so nicely suited to this because, like, I'm getting into some pretty energetic putting on paint now, and the music's kind of humming along with the. same kind of feel to it, it all works real well together. When I'm painting musicians, I love it if I can put on their music while I'm painting. I ran down to the coffee shop, the Inglebee, just to grab my afternoon coffee before I start back in on this. You can see I've got a lot, a lot finished at least in its basic form and for a painting like this the basic is pretty close to the finished in terms of not wanting to refine it too far but the faces will get a lot more re refining. Microphones aren't put in yet. The instruments you can see a little more detail on those and then of course the next thing I'm going to do I think is get in that that mostly rather rich orangish background that the uh, the lighting at the Elk Creek Cafe creates around the stage area, and then and then from there I can I can kind of finish them in within the confines of that background. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom in closer first, so you can see a little better. So now I'm going to just start putting in this I'll I'll put some of that background in but you know there's the background really is pretty diffuse here and that's what I like about it um, I don't want it to distract from them I mean they're on stage that much is clear just from the light and everything but this is about them about being there but not about the surroundings so much so with very little background in there this is mostly going to be just what brings them out most effectively I'm not going to have it all this rich in orange because that would be distracting, but I'm going to have it kind of in the center and right next to them, and then I'm going to fade out to a more subtle color outside of that and darker. But I want this rich enough to bring out the mostly dark clothing that they're wearing um, so you can see them against it, and then I'll, I'll let it go a little darker around the edges, maybe bring in a little bit more of that 
brighter and tense, right, right in the middle here. So I'll let you watch for a little bit again. Um, and what you're seeing here in bits and pieces is a lot of, a lot like what you would get if you ever can make it to one of my workshops or or if you live close by in the area even some of the open studios and other teaching that I do on a regular basis here because I always do a demo painting or my general plan is I'll do a demo plan, painting at the beginning of, a, of an open studio or beginning of each part of the day when I'm doing a workshop and then the uh, then students get to have a chance to work on whatever they're working on and I walk around and help them. But watching me paint like this in person, of course, you can ask questions, you can see exactly what I'm doing. You know, you can move around to get a better look. It's kind of hard to set it up that you can see everything just for the video like this, but it gives you a good sense of it. Um, I'm actually going to go to a little smaller brush now as I start working on finishing things up. Because this brush now is just a little bit too big to give me the kind of control I want. I wanted that to establish everything initially, but now I want to be able to move in with a little smaller brush, not a tiny brush, but I'm going to get something smaller, work on some things, put this I'm working now with a half inch wide brush, quite a bit smaller than I was before. Um, and it's letting me get in there and do some finer facial detail. This isn't the kind of painting where I've, I've got to find that balance point, though, between enough facial detail that anybody who knows them would know who it is or be able to tell who it is, but not so that it doesn't fit the feel of the rest of the painting because it is a fairly loose, impressionistic painting. So. The whole painting has to work as a whole, and that means not overdoing the detailing. So, you know, I'll keep kind of going back and forth. In some cases, I might get it more than I want and back off and actually make something a little less detailed than I than I had it at one point. Um, those are the fine judgment calls that hit me, especially when you have people and their faces involved. Let's make it work with the whole painting. At the same time, you can have a little bit more detail. You want a little more detail and resolution in the most important parts of a painting. So, obviously, faces are a very important part when they're people. So having the faces somewhat more refined than the rest is a good thing. You just don't want to overdo it. Well, yesterday, I took the painting as far as I felt I could in the one sitting. A really small painting, even of this type, I'll often finish in one sitting. In this case, though, the main thing that I still want to do is get the faces to better represent these two people. Okay, so here's the photograph. So you can see where, what we've got in terms of how, how it looks as the photo that I'm working from. Um, here, I'll give you a close-up of that one. It's hard to see it except really up close where I've kind of filtered that one a bit. Can't really see it. Um, and this is where we're at in the painting. Let me scan it out a little bit. Other than a few little touches, the instruments, the hands, uh, the background, that's just about where I want it. I want to get those faces to look more like the people. I'm a little happy with where Christina's at right now. It looks pretty close, because remember, this isn't supposed to be a tightly detailed kind of a portrait. This is supposed, the faces should have that same looseness as the rest of them, but I've got to get it better representing who they are as individual people. I'm going to start writing with a smaller brush, the half inch brush that I finished up with yesterday. I need to take my glasses off the paint if I I can see fine at this distance that I don't have as much issue with glass kind of fighting my vision close. I did uh, I replenished my paint because what what was left from yesterday was dry. I had the same things in the same places. You can see all these subtle colors that I had mixed up on the palette as I worked yesterday. And you see the colors here you can see on the on the canvas. Um, but I did add some add new fresh paint 
And I'm going to start in now. Now, Dave's nose is like too short and squashed back. It needs to have a little bit more length to it. Uh, so he's got a bit more of an upright look. That I can see right away. Christine's uh, line of her cheek coming out just a bit more here. The rest of her face is pretty close. Again, in that in that abs that kind of impressionistic style I'm doing here, it's not about how many details all there. What it really is, and this this holds true with any impressionism, whether it's a landscape, a person, an animal. With impressionism, it's not about having everything there. It's about not having anything there that is wrong. If you have anything about the shapes and the details that is not true to the original, it throws the person off that they can't see what you want them to see in it. Whereas if you only have a minimal amount of detail, but everything that's there is correct as, it, as far as it goes, the viewer's mind's eye will finish the, it off and it will finish these people off to look like, if they, especially if they know them personally, they'll look just like them or to at least imagine. For somebody who doesn't know them personally, it doesn't matter as much. Um, that's what works with impressions. I don't have anything here that's incorrect. So I'm gonna start mixing my colors. Of course, all my colors in my palette pretty much are dry now. A few thick areas might be a bit wet yet from yesterday, but I essentially had to start over with mixing and that's all right. Uh, one of my favorite things about Dave and Christine is that Professional musicians though they are and entertainers and they've been doing this for years. They've been they've toured in Europe and around the United States. They're very down-to-earth people. And uh, and they're just one of the tightest couples I know in, in, the, in all the best ways. You hardly ever see one of them without seeing the other one. I just think that's such a neat thing. And there I believe it is, the finished painting of Dave and Christine. As with many of the paintings that I do in this series, this one will be available until someone purchases it. Just uh, get in touch with me or, or with the Green Drake Gallery. Until next time, if you're a painter, keep on painting. Hope you'll keep checking in, make this channel something you regularly visit. And if you haven't ever tried painting, I hope you'll give it a shot.